Hey, Brandon. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I actually meant to email you. I um, am not able to uh, um, join you for our lesson tomorrow. <laughs> I, okay. I totally <laughs> but I, I double booked myself. So it's on me. I apologize for that. That's um, fine. Irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. That's rule number one, right, Jude? Um, so I will, uh, I'll drop you an email. We'll try to reschedule something. Yeah, that's fine. I can't believe Jude's giving me crap right now. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, I've recently been the king of fucking, you know, like irresponsibility. I, I, I've been double booking myself. You know how it is. It's all, but it's all worked out, you know. Oh, has it? Yeah, it all works out in the end. <laughs> we got to talk about my website sometime. Yeah, I, I sent you an email. I told you we could get oh. We need to get on it. Oh, I just, I need to look at it. It's probably all gone okay. or something. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll stop giving you a hard time. <laughs> Let's see. We got, we got Charles here too. Okay. Um, I think we're going to be missing a few today. There's, uh, hey Charles, there's a couple things going on for the high school students. Uh, they're doing like some Zoom band meetings or something. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but um, I don't even know if band's going to happen. Have you heard anything, Brandon? Is is Como doing marching band this fall? Uh, they are going to uh, do like like sectional rehearsal like towards uh, the end of this month, but they haven't said anything about actually like field marching or anything. So. Okay, okay. Did you talk to uh, um, Scott? Uh, yeah, it's Scott, thank you. Why am I blanking? Yeah, I did, I did uh, speak to him. He, he said that it's a uh, possibility for okay. it, uh, depending on how everything goes with the, uh, the virus and how the school goes and all that. Sure, so. yeah, that's... That's kind of how everything is right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have ensembles at UL, um, but it kind of depends on how everything goes. And, and then I was talking to my buddy at Alabama today, and he was like, nope, we're not allowed to do anything, not even quartet. And I was like, oh, okay. So this could change. <laughs> it's a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, um, We'll wait another minute here, but uh, Jude, since you're kind of fired up and ready to go, do you want to go first today? Yeah, I can. I, I can go. I think Bill was going to go, and then he ended up um, having to go to North Carolina to help out. Thank you for modeling good warming up. Yeah, no, it was, it was perfect. I was doing it sitting down, too. So. Yeah, sitting on the couch is the best way to play the trombone. Oh, yeah, dude. You're sure. really being a great role model for young Charles over here. I know. I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. Uh, the words of the wise. All right. Well, let's uh, check one more thing, and then we'll hit it. Let me make sure my stream's working. Um, wait. It is not. Go. Hmm. Uh, give me one second. Now we're good. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and start with Jude today. We've got uh, Jude's performances, maybe Bill if he makes it. And then I've got a couple of things that I want to play for everybody. Um, so we'll get through that stuff. We're going to do comments kind of like we have in the past. So we're looking for comments on articulation, tone, musicality, um, technical things that may help our performer, but also uh, some of the non-technical musical things that'll help. Um, I'm going to have Jude kind of introduce what he's going to play, but just to kind of introduce what Jude's doing, um, Jude is preparing for 
a, uh, a recital this fall. Fingers crossed we actually get to like have an audience and stuff. And he's going to have a number of different things at that recital. Um, there's going to be uh, the McCarty with strings, with like a string octet or something like that, right, Jude? Yep. Um, and then you're going to do um, a pretty sweet uh, trombone choir arrangement where you're playing the solo bass trombone stuff. And then uh, there's, there's is it an octet behind you? I can't remember. Uh, Sextet. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then just kind of this, set this stage just a little bit more. Jude is a computer science major who has been taking trombone lessons seriously. Um, I don't know, how long have you been studying? You studied with Scott before me, right? Yeah, so I was senior in high school and then freshman year in college and then the next few years with you. Yeah, so it's been like four years of solid study. So we're pretty excited about this recital just to kind of show off everything that he's been doing because it's been a lot more than kind of our our normal non-major sort of situation. So this is just an opportunity for you to do a little playing for us and to get a little feedback from some people other than me because he's heard a lot from me lately. Well, especially in the last semester. So, all right, Jude, take it away. I'm going to be playing the Andante section of Capriccio uh, for a bass trombone by, what's his freaking name? I keep, uh, Stephen Bearfalls. I can never remember his last name. Uh, um, this is going to be the Andante section, the slow section in the middle uh, for today, plus the cadenza at the end, like just following the Andante section. Also, I got, I'm got i going to play this real fast because I got uh, I gotta take something out of the oven in about five minutes, so play it now. stuff going on there um i want to get some some comments for you you said you had to take something out of the oven or something yeah yeah in about two minutes so yeah you have to keep talking i'm turning the volume on really low okay great can't wait yeah. um so I'll, I'll go ahead and just give a couple um quick comments just to kind of get the conversation started here and then we'll listen to we'll, we'll hear from everybody else so um this this capriccio section um it's i can't remember all the words on it but it's, it's, I believe, just marked legato 
and we end up with all these half step and whole step kind of legato patterns and i think one of the things that you might want to watch out for in that stuff is that it the half step is starting to sound a little on the glissy side and i like that you're trying to keep it as smooth as possible because i do think like that that half step being as legato or smooth as possible is really the the most interesting part of this little melody i mean he's he uses this like function all the way through it's not even a melody it's just like a function but um i think i think it's it's you got to be careful not to let it get on the glissy side okay there's one section where uh there's one time that it does it that i do have to gliss it like it does a it marks into gliss like um, at, the very, at the very beginning like the second time it does it and mm -hmm. just there so i i need yeah i need to make it more ob and ob more obvious different yeah. differentiation yeah yeah i think so i agree i mean i think i think if you make it really obvious as to what you're doing that's good but the other thing is i want you to keep working on making it as smooth as possible in the other sections because that's that's like key um so that finding that like perfect little balance point is going to be really really important especially on the half steps i think the other thing to do is when you move into the upper register you need to prepare for that just a little bit more so Technically speaking, I, I thought it was actually, it was an air thing rather than a, a chop support thing. It was like your corners were set and everything seemed like it was going to work really well. And it was like, you just didn't quite get the air speed where it needed to be. Boom. Yeah, I, I messed up and I, over, I overshot it like way hard. The, the, uh, like that part, like, yeah, I, I way overshot it and messed up on that part whenever I was going up. And that's just like that's that's a bass trombone. It's like worst worst nightmare because you're in sixth, seventh, eighth partial, and it's just like that's it's not it, on bass trombone. There's like actual technical issues with the way that lines up because we're trying to line up the lower partials on the instrument. It's possible. It's not. I mean, there's nothing that says it isn't possible. If if Paul Pollard can do it, yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say if Paul Pollard can do it, all of us can do it. But Paul Pollard, yeah. can do it, so we should try, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So, but I would say just watch out for that. Make sure that the air is actually prepared because the chops were fine. It's just that the air is not quite in the right place. So those are kind of my, my two big things. I thought um, overall it sounded pretty good though. And um, it'll be interesting to hear what that's like with the whole octet backing it. Um, All hopefully, right. hopefully we get to do that. Uh, does anybody else have any comments for Jude just based on the Capriccio section there? Yeah, at least. Let me, uh, you got it, okay. So I heard that you like you had really good tone. That's what I noticed. Like the first thing when you were playing, like your tone was really like full. Is a good big sound. That's like good as I've heard for like bass trombone. That helps a lot. But what I think you could work on is like the phrasing, like where you take your breaths and how you can like make it more musical. And yeah, I thought that up a couple of times. You're right. Yeah, and like Doctor Yates was saying, like your articulation. You could work on that. Like I don't know legato studies in like Bordoni or something or long tones and try to do it like very legato but without like glissing and things like that and that goes along with like good tone like that that's gonna like complement your good tone you're right cool yeah. yeah nice comment yeah I think you know Bordoni works for that the other thing is just to work on your uh, this is something that I've been working on lately like if you're working on your scales work on your scales down and up in half steps and make sure that when you're making your transitions throughout your whole step, half steps, that you're really working on a legato sound. I, I think one of the things that happens to all of us is in Louisiana, and this is true of most states, but I'll pick on Louisiana. Um, we, <laughs> we, we learn our major scales by auditioning for all state and we articulate ascending and we legato descending. And so that means our descending legato is always better than our ascending legato because we don't practice it as much. So I would just take some time working on scales and especially following the, the half step changes in the scales and making sure that you've got those, those half steps really legato. Um, just another way of working on that for sure. Um, cool. Nice comment. Thanks. Uh, anybody else got a comment for Jude? Brandon. I agree with what everyone said. Your tone is like really good, especially being like over Zoom. I know how hard it is to portray like a good sound over the uh, <laughs> over this uh, internet setup we have. Um, going back to the uh, 
kind of the the gliss versus legato like weird sanctions in it i think you could uh differ differentiate it a bit more uh, by adding maybe some weight to the gliss so that you can kind of like you can kind of hear like okay this is supposed to be gliss and then this is supposed to be legato maybe add a little bit more tongue and a faster slide on the legato part so you can hear okay it's the legato and then the gliss just add a, a bit more weight to the the gliss parts yeah okay i got you yeah cool that's good that's good brandon thanks that's a good comment um cool well i think we'll go ahead and move on we've got uh elias has some david uh, prepared. So we'll listen to some of that. Jude, thanks so much for kicking us off today. I appreciate it. It's good to hear you play. Um, we'll see what Elias has for us here. I'm going to put you on speaker view here. And uh, why don't you go ahead and just tell us, just so everybody knows, because not everybody may know what David is yet. I'm looking at Charles. Charles, maybe we'll work on David next year. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to see, I just got a new mic for interlocking. So I'm going to see if the mic works, like from this angle. Okay. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Yeah. What are you using just so that we all know? It's like a, let me see what it's called. I have it right here. It's a blue snowball. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. I've, I've thought about experimenting with those. Those seem to work pretty well. Yeah. Cool. All right, so you have David. Is this the first movement? Second movement. Second movement. Cool. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs>
really nice. nice. Big round of applause. Sounds good, man. So um, I want to ask you just a couple questions, and then I'll, uh, I've got a couple of things, and then we'll get to, to some other comments. So um, this may take a second, everybody. So if, remember your comment, um, because I may blab. Sorry. Um, yeah, so really nice work. So you mentioned this before you played, and I didn't want to get sidetracked. So can you just kind of explain to everybody, you're going to interlock in this summer, but interlock in summer camp is not being held in person, right? Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of explain to everybody just so they know, just so that we all know kind of what is going on with interlock and how okay. camp's going to work? So like it's online now and it's basically, it was like I was, I was signed up for the one week one, but now it's three weeks. So we have oh. like a lot more material we can cover now. So it's like based, like it's a, they have a schedule for each day. It's like you start out, Everyone in the low brass starts out with the same class. It's uh, I think it's it's low brass repertoire and technique, where we like we talk about how we warm up and how to like, like I think take on like challenges. Like if you have a problem with like technique or you're like legato tonguing, we go we went over like a bunch of like uh, Roshu's and uh, the Arbin's books and stuff and the Koprash. We went over a bunch of those. And then at the end, like the last 30 minutes of that class, we go over like solos, like people can perform like this. And then the professor, Thomas Riccobono from Interlock, and he, he like critiques us. And then, and if anyone has something to say, like a comment, it's basically the same as what we're doing here. Yeah. And then cool. Ex except you're with a lot of different people, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then our second class is the brass ensemble class where we get like it we would normally be like you would actually perform in a brass like quintet but it's online now so we use a program called audacity and we actually they have like tracks where it's the detroit symphony orchestra players but they take off like say like no trombone so i record my playing like a, a certain quintet over there like recording awesome so then it sounds like you're playing with them sweet that's yeah. awesome Huh. And we did the same thing with the uh, with orchestral pieces. We were performing late preludes and Beethoven five that I just submit yesterday. Okay, so like you put you listen to a recording of the orchestra yeah. playing it, and then and you the, record your part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And then they're That's gonna cool. edit all the like. I think they said there's like fourteen hundred like people. <laughs> they're gonna put all those together, and then they're gonna uh, put it for the collage. I think it's like july 18th that's like the final performance thing mm -hmm. cool yeah. well the list is awesome man i yeah. i uh i'd always wanted to play it and i never got to play it until this yeah, last really winter <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool that's way cool yeah. well that sounds really neat uh i like that they're doing that the the quintets that way too so that's yeah. that's really exciting uh, we'll look forward to hearing more about that as you get yeah. to experience more but mm -hmm. that's great and it's cool that you get to uh uh, to work with Rick Abona. I, he's a great teacher and a great player. So that's really cool. Um, kind of workshopped or, or uh, taught on the second movement yet? No, I haven't learned it like with a professor yet. I just, okay. I practiced it a couple of days and then I had to put it away because interlocking started. Yeah. I had to work on a lot of like quintet music. Edition. I don't know what edition you've been using. Um, I but the same one. Let's same one. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple different editions. The brown edition has, I don't actually like the brown edition very much, um, but it, it usually has, uh, I think there's two versions of it. The older version actually has like bigger phrase markings, which are kind of helpful. So I'll see if I can mm -hmm. find that in PDF it and send it to you just to kind of get an idea. Because this edition, you kind of lose some of that, but there's all these rests in here where the orchestra is doing stuff. And so we end up with kind of what we would kind of consider a, like a choppy look to the music. Um. So we, we, we kind of end up like not actually getting the full idea yeah. of the second movement until you're like way down here after E somewhere is when we kind of start to put all these ideas together. So what I always talk to students about is you want to have that idea fully formed at the very beginning of the movement so that we don't kind of, so that the audience doesn't kind of lose the thread of what you're providing them. Um, yeah. 
So one of my recommendations for that is be really careful with the dynamics and make sure that those are really coming out. And I thought they were starting to come out. And then uh, the seventh and eighth partial stuff here, especially the intonation with the F sharp, I think it kind of got to you a little bit mentally. Yeah. And then we kind of lost some of that thread, but that, that thread's really important. So make sure that that's really sticking out to you. And then the other thing I recommend people doing is actually practicing this without the rest so that you can start to feel what the phrase is gonna feel like. It doesn't make any sense rhythmically or harmonically, like the melodic harmonic structure, um, but it, it, it makes a lot of sense in terms of like the actual practice structure of it. So this is just what it would sound like, just, just to give you an idea. Whoops, I just didn't yeah. do it. <laughs> My bad. I'll try again. really important and what you need to bring out um there's one thing that i did in there there's a couple places where i kind of accent the beginning of an idea and that doesn't come out when you're listening to the recording or when you're thinking about these it's just little fragments but yeah. when you play it all in a row like that you're like oh this is important mm -hmm. oh this is not important even though it seemed important and i think that's kind of worth thinking about so I don't know. It's kind of a silly exercise in a way, and it really has nothing to do with how you're going to actually perform it. Um, but it gives you a better idea of what the audience may want to actually listen to. So it doesn't yeah. just feel like a bunch of little, little things strung together. Um, and David's kind of like, he's writing in a neoclassical fashion in this. So it's really important to kind of have an idea about where he's coming from before you, before you dive at it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just one thing I would mention. Um, and it's just an idea about how to practice it more than anything. Mm -hmm. I think kind of my last idea had a lot to do with the the seventh and, and sixth partial stuff in there. Um, I don't know. It's probably easier if I just kind of show you. Um, but I would just be very careful as you're going up in tessitura, like right here. Uh, be very careful about your E flat being low enough, your G being high enough, and then definitely getting that F sharp yeah. high enough on the slide. And that's just all this, that's stuff that we've talked about before, but it's one of those things that I, I if it were me, I would probably go through and drone on an F sharp, drone on a G, drone on an E flat. Um, the whole way through, I'd be droning on the E flat, but especially those first little snippets, I would make sure that I was droning on some of my seventh yeah. partial stuff, um, just to make sure it's really, really there. Um, do you have any uh, like recordings that you're listening to or play along backing tracks that you're using for this? No, I, I just heard, um, I think, a Joe Alessi and Christian Lindbergh. Those okay. Are two I mainly like. Is it the Christian Lindbergh, the one with the, the uh, orchestral um, I, I backing? So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one goes a little fast in the second movement. Mm -hmm. This is just my opinion. You've probably heard yeah. it before, <laughs> but... <laughs> It goes a little fast, um, but I think the the Alessi one is an awesome recording. I like the Christian Lindbergh one fine. There's also a Christian Lindbergh recording. I can't remember if it was on an actual album or if it's just something that he had on his website for a while of him playing it with piano. And I thought that one really shows off kind of the lyrical quality of this movement really well. There's a great recording of uh, Zoltan Kiss uh, playing this with piano not with orchestra which is just it's a little bit more realistic as to what most of mm. us are probably going to do yeah um and and that one's out i think that's just a it's on soundcloud or something so that's probably worth looking for i'll see if i can send you the link uh, okay. but but that that's also kind of some helpful tidbits there for you so that's kind of my take on it i thought i i think you've got for what you've done with it so far you've got a really good idea of what you want to do it's just yeah. kind of making sure that you're really molding those first little tidbits so that you've actually got something to hang on to when you get later in the movement. Yeah. But really nice work on that. It's sounding good. Uh, does anybody else have any, any comments for Elias on what he's been working on here at the second movement of David? 
Yeah. So uh, I really like what you're doing with it for only having worked on it for only like a, a couple of sessions and it really isn't a big focus right now for you. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Nice. Um, only thing I would say right now, uh, whenever you go down like the, the theme, but it's lower down an octave. So it's like a, a mm -hmm. G on the bottom of the staff and then yeah. C. Uh, whenever you're going into the scene first, it's kind of a little like glissy. So maybe you could think of going to like the scene six, then it's a little bit shorter of a, a throw yeah. instead of going all the way into first. That, that might be able to help that. And then uh, you're kind of getting a little bliss on some of the uh, dotted eighths, sixteenths. So maybe, maybe you could think of those less as like big slur passages and maybe just kind of add a little bit more tongue into it yeah like maybe a little bit of separation not too much since they are slurred and it would kind of sound weird like da, da, da. <laughs> so maybe just kind of th think of those a little bit different so you don't get too much of a glist throughout the uh, the piece but they're all other than that everything sounds good yeah. maybe you could play play with like time a bit in it instead of everything being so strict and and metered you know? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Nice comments. Yeah. Thanks. Those are all really good um, ideas about how to do things. And, and I, I like that uh, comment about being less metered. Um, if you think about a cl the classical form, concerti, um, that, that middle movement's kind of meant to be, I mean, it, it all came out of this extended um, idea of cadenza. So you, you can really take some yeah. freedom with that, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, within reason, <laughs> but you can take some freedom and, um, and some time to do as you wish. Uh, okay. And you'll hear that with some of those other recordings, um, for sure. That's definitely a possibility. Any other comments for Elias? Sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen. Did anybody raise their hand? No, uh, I think no. Me, uh, me Jude, and Jude. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, me and I, I think the other guy uh, had one too, but um, okay. I was going to say, uh, so I, I, I like your style and your intention. Like, it, I think it, I think it's obvious to anyone who's listening to you play it um, that you you know what you're doing. Like, I, like you know what you want out of the piece. So, like, that's coming across, at least to me, it came across very, uh, very clearly. Like, I understood the ideas you were trying to, you were trying to convey. So that was, that was uh, well done. Um, I noticed uh, something that I used to do, I think, uh, I, I, when I was like in late high school and like early college, I, I tried to wipe out. Um, whenever, you, <clears throat> whenever you are coming off of a phrase and you're trying to hit a new note, um, you'll, ki you'll kind of flub it. <clears throat> yeah. And I remember doing this a lot. I remember doing this a lot. And uh, the teacher that I had before Dr. Yates helped like really like – drilled into me and got me to uh stop doing it so much and i feel like i've gotten a lot stronger on it is uh is visualizing where you want to go so like you played you played a, a g in a staff a million billion times like before so you know what it feels like and you know where you have to go to hit that like in your mind but uh if you want to not flub it if you want to if you want to get like an absolutely clean attack like the first thing is air like have enough air to support that but i'm sure you've already heard that a million times yeah. the second thing is the visualization of it in your mind so like instead of just like going to like an automatic response of like trying to hit the g you need to like clearly and presently like think about going to that note so like visualize playing a g in your mind like the forefront of your consciousness and you will most likely be able to hit it like more dead on. At least that's what happened with me. I think I think you're doing a, a similar thing to what I was doing, and uh, visualizing the note and knowing where I wanted to go and getting used to doing that all the time helped fix that for me. So I think that might be a that might be something you could work on. I also liked uh, I also liked your dynamics. You adhered to the dynamics really well, and it was arranged like all over the place. So it was yeah, yeah it was compelling that. Uh, in that respect so it was cool yeah, thanks. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice good comments Jude Charles did you have a comment well I gotta unmute you if you're talking all right you got something 
and I want to say I agree with what you said about him like fixing it more like dynamic and conveying it a little bit more clearly but I thought it was pretty good yeah just like not using it playing it a lot and not in like lessons so mm-hmm. yeah cool good thanks Charles good um I, I'm gonna play a little I think I think I'm gonna play can you uh can you move back a little bit from your mic when you were playing a second ago you were like clipping pretty hard oh was I okay yeah, move it over I, here. something I'm gonna point a different way thanks all right cool and I'm gonna switch mics is that working can you hear me yay um cool so I, I'm gonna play um I'm just going to play one of these Conconis. I've been having, this is kind of new for me. So for those of you who've been studying with me for a while, I've kind of switched away from, from Wardoni Rochus um, this summer. And so like Charles has been working out of the Conconi book. Uh, I've got another high school freshman working out of the Conconi book. Um, this is uh, the one I'm using is uh, Don Miller. Well, I got a bunch of stuff on here, but it's Don Miller. Uh, transcriptions for trombone but th these are these have been used for a long time actually longer than some of the Bordonis um, and so I, I just I kind of decided that I wanted to bring these back they're a little easier than some of the Bordonis so I think that they, they work pretty well for a little bit younger player um, but I also think that some of the legato kind of concepts that they work on like moving through ranges everything's kind of introduced a little bit more methodically than the Bordoni um, and so that's one of the reasons I've been using them. But what I've discovered is that no one has recordings of these. So everybody's out there recording the first 60 or 70 Bordonis and they're all over YouTube, but I can't seem to find many of these uh, Conconis and I don't actually find many singers using them anymore. So I thought maybe I'd try to record some of these at some point, but um, this is, I'll play number 12. Uh, it's in C. We'll see how this goes. Here's a playing test, Jude. Let me know if it's too much. <laughs> I learned this at uh, Interlocking. If you press on that like arrow next to your uh, mute and unmute button, yeah, you, you can go to your audio settings, and then it says like automatically adjust the microphone. Oh yeah, I've got all that, that off. Helps. Yeah. Maybe I just have it too high. It's, I don't know why it's up so high. How's that? Can you still hear me talking? Yeah. Okay. Let's try this. number 12 has anybody actually worked on these before brandon have you done these 
No? Okay. Um, well, I'll take comments. <laughs> Jude's excited about this. I, there's too much clipping. Uh, no, really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was fine. Uh, are you supposed to, is, is this like a glistening exercise or, or what? Like, that, can you do this like in glistening? Because it feels like that's what it wants to do. Like, can you practice it glistening? Yeah, or like, are you supposed to? Because that's what it sounds like it should be. Yeah, it's meant to be absolutely uh, legato. So the, the original exercise for vocalists, the idea was you sing it on a vowel sound. So like you'd sing it on ah, ah, and you'd want your your transitions from note to note to be totally smooth, no overshooting, undershooting sort of thing. Okay, cool. So should I practice a glist more? Was that the... I don't know, man. You, you, okay. you. I mean, uh, I just wondered if that's that if that was what you were hearing. Like, it's not. No, I, I just heard like elements of glistening in it. Like, especially like you kind of did it at the beginning, and I was just wondering because, and it sounds like it should be. It sounds like it should be gliss, like just from the just from the piece itself. Yeah, like this one particularly, it's it's got a ton of natural slurs, especially if you use outer positions. So, you know, what I'm trying to do is just use natural slurs and keep stuff as yeah, as smooth as possible. Cool. Well, you did that. Cool. Good. I managed to do something. Anybody else? Charles, let me unmute you. All right. Um, I thought your dynamic and the smoothness between notes and the higher register were very clear and nice, even into the lower range. Mm, I remember okay. playing that one, and it was harder to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd forgotten that you'd done this one. Yeah, it okay. was just different because the positions were a little bit funky, but now it's clearer, so. Cool, okay. It is for me, so. Nice. Thanks. I'll take it. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? No one? Okay, Elias. Let me, uh, oops, that was me, my bad. Okay. <laughs> I just thought it was very musical, and I liked the uh, phrasing and the breathing, like, spots where you just breathe. I could tell you, like, you know where you were going to. Like, it wasn't just, like, guessing where you're going to breathe. Yeah, they're marked. I marked all yeah. my breaths. <laughs> <laughs> I did what my teacher told me to do. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, um, I think that's all I'll do today. I don't think I need to play anything else for you guys, but um, if anybody has any interest in those uh, Conconis, I, I would recommend picking the book up. It's, I mean, I can, I can send you PDFs. I guess I just said that on the internet, but um, the book's like 12 bucks. Uh, it's an ensemble, an old ensemble publications thing. And there's a couple different versions floating around out there. I think there's a, a newer one that's got some backing tracks, some, some piano stuff that goes with it, but this is pretty nice. And um, if nothing else, they're nice sight reading. And they're all in the middle of the staff, basically. So if you play bass, well, even if you don't play bass, if you want to read some stuff down the octave, if you want to read some stuff in tenor clef, uh, up the octave, that sort of stuff, and work on those exercises, they're a little more approachable than even like the first 20 Bordonis in terms of those things. So that's, that's a nice, nice little remembering thing that I did this summer where I was like, oh yeah, there's these. I don't have to use the Bordonis all the time. Uh, cool. Well, I think we'll call it at that. So next week um, is actually kind of our last um, studio class proper. And then the last week of summer lessons, we'll just be doing a, uh, like a Zoom recital. And I sent that link out and you're, you're welcome to share that with any family members or friends that may want to watch and see what's going on. Um, so for next week, we'll make sure that we kind of go over the recital stuff and we'll go over a couple of performance etiquette things, just stuff about how to introduce your piece. And, um, you know, Zoom's a little awkward because you play and nothing happens and we're used to clapping and that sort of stuff. So we'll talk about what that's like. Um, I've got some information on lessons this fall and how that's going to work, uh, especially in the private studio. And then hopefully I'll have this video on trombone safety done. That'll just show you a few little things um, about what we're actually hoping we can do in person here this fall. So that's next week. And then the week after is our studio recital, which will be pretty fun and exciting. 
So if anybody's got any questions, just let me know, drop me an email. Um, otherwise, it's great to see everybody. And for those of you who joined us on the stream, good to see Cabby join us. And uh, thanks for doing that. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks. Bye.